Hi and uh, welcome to the next lesson. This one is about animal studies of attachment. In particular, we're going to look at Lorenz and Harlow. They're two key studies in psychology when we look at attachment. Now, the reason we carry out studies on animals is because it helps us understand that attachments are fairly universal. They, they kind of apply across lots of different species. Also, some of the studies we actually carry out on animals might be seen as too unethical to be carried out on humans. Um, however, there's a lot of debate about how ethical it is to carry these out on animals too. So this is quite heavily debated in, in psychology. Now, the first key study we're going to look at was Lorenz's research. Uh, and he wanted to uh, sort of investigate this relationship between infant animals and their mothers in the hope that he could apply the same concepts to human behaviour. He set up a key experiment on imprinting in geese. Uh, and this is when birds that are mobile from birth attach themselves to the first thing they see moving. Uh, it always occurs within a critical period, thought to take place in as little as a, a few hours after birth to the first few days. And once it's passed, Lorenz found that the chicks didn't form an attachment to a mother figure. Okay, so Lorenz really stresses the importance of this critical period. So to carry out the research, he had a clutch of goose eggs. And then he divided these, these up into two. So half of the eggs were going to be hatched with their mother goose in their natural environment. The other half would be hatched in an incubator. And what Lorenz wanted to find out is if the incubated um, eggs, once they were hatched, would imprint on the first object they saw move. And in this particular case, it was Lorenz himself. So could the incubator chicks attach themselves to Lorenz? So, in actual fact, the, the findings from his studies found that the incubator group did follow Lorenz everywhere, whereas the control groups, so those that were hatched with their mum, followed their mother everywhere. Um, he actually mixed up the geese as well, so he, he uh, marked them a little bit so he knew which ones were incubator chicks and which ones were raised with their mother. Um, and even though he mixed them up, they soon kind of separated quite quickly and the incubator chicks started to follow him again. Now, what Lorenz says is that imprinting is irreversible and long-lasting. So, once it's happened, it's kind of stuck. Uh, and he also said that it led to sexual imprinting. So, a similar mate is chosen to the same kind of object they imprinted on, which can cause issues for later develop, development. Um, but let's have a quick look at Lorenz and his geese. So as you can see from the clip, the geese really did follow Lorenz everywhere. Uh, but as with any research, we do need to evaluate it. So what are some of the strengths and weaknesses when trying to apply Lorenz's research? Um, there is support, first of all. So there's other studies that demonstrate in uh, imprinting anim any animals, uh, which supports Lorenz's research. So for example, leghorn chicks were exposed to a yellow rubber glove for feeding and they became imprinted on the gloves. Um, this does support Lorenz's claim that young animals are able to imprint on any moving object during this critical period. Also, the male chicks later try to mate with the gloves, which also demonstrates this idea of sexual imprinting that Lorenz was talking about. However, there is um, some evidence that this imprinting can be reversed, and this does contradict Lorenz, who says it was irreversible and long-lasting. So when the leghorn chicks were able to spend time with their own species, they were later able to mate more appropriately. 
So this is quite a key thing that this critical period can be reversed in terms of imprinting. We can't always um, generalise the findings of imprinting to humans as birds and mammals have very different relationships. So for example, a, uh, a mother who's a mammal might show more emotion than birds and mammals might actually be able to form attachments at any time, even though it might be more difficult <coughs> Excuse me, if it occurs much later. So we have to be cautious when we apply Lorenz's research to humans. We have to think about what those strengths and weaknesses are. Does it really apply to human behaviour? Now, the next key study in attachment psychology is Harlow's research, and he wanted to demonstrate that attachment wasn't based on a feeding bond between a mother and an infant, but was more about contact comfort. Now, lots of psychologists say it's the feeding uh, that actually causes an attachment, and there's a, another lesson on that later on. So he was prompted to carry out the research after finding that caged baby monkeys were more likely to survive if they were given a soft cloth to cuddle, also termed as a cheesecloth. So he wanted to test this idea, and to do this he carried out one of the most important attachments um, or attachment studies in animals, and we still use this today. So the study involved two wire model mothers, okay, like the ones pictured on the right. Now they were quite different, so they both had different heads, but the most important thing really is that one was covered in a soft cloth, but the other one wasn't. So he split up the baby monkeys into two groups. So half of them were um, assigned to a condition where the feeding bottle was attached to the cloth mother and half of them where the feeding bottle was attached to the wire mother uh, to see which mother they would go to. So even if they had a bottle attached to the cloth or the wire mother, all of the monkeys preferred to spend time with the cloth mother. They found it more comforting and they would just visit the wire monkey for food uh, and then return to the cloth mother. So this, according to Harlow, does demonstrate that contact comfort is much more important than feeding when forming an attachment. He did continue his research and he found that even when a money, monkey had uh, contact comfort from the cloth, there were long lasting effects associated with their early attachment experiences. So for example, they became quite socially abnormal, they would freeze or flee around other monkeys. Uh, they were also sexually abnormal, they didn't show normal mating behaviour and they didn't cradle their own babies which meant it had quite a profound effect on their own parenting skills. The monkeys could recover though, so if they spent time with their peers, peers before um, three months old um, they could then form more normal relationships later on. Okay, uh, But again it had to be in this critical period which does support what Lorenz is saying. So again, I just want to show you a quick clip of Harlow's monkeys. Uh, it's important that you can see how the monkeys behaved with the different types of uh, mothers. Conquest. The search for new knowledge about our universe, our world, and ourselves. This monkey is an orphan, separated from his mother since the day of his birth. Literally, his life hangs by a thread, a soft cheesecloth pad that is his only companion, his only comfort. Once a day, the pad is removed for cleaning. This is the laboratory of psychologist Harry Harlow. Distressed. Permanently deprived. He is studying monkeys to better understand human relationships. He may die for want of love. Harlow believes he can use science to study love. With a series of pioneering experiments, he explores territory where few scientists have ventured. Harlow said that there was such a thing as a science of love, for example, that love, the kind of intimacy that characterized relationships between mothers and infants, although in his case he studied monkeys, um, could be the object of science, that you literally could move love into a laboratory, put it under a microscope. Harlow is studying love because he believes it makes an indelible impact on a young life. The relationship between a mother and her child, what Harlow calls our earliest social environment, could hold the key to explaining behavior throughout life. Harlow designs a set of ingenious experiments. He raises a baby monkey, 
allowing it to choose between two surrogate mothers, a wire mother that feeds it, and a cloth mother that doesn't. A cloth mother that Harlow thinks might provide something else, comfort and love. Here's baby 106, weaned on a wire mother. He's going to the wire mother. But this infant quickly runs to the cloth mother, where he will stay for the next 18 hours cuddling. In Harlow's mind, choosing nurturing over sustenance. In another experiment, Harlow creates a fearful situation. Whom does the infant turn to now? Let's find out what his reactions to his mother are when we frighten him. He's scared, all right. And he does what any child will do in a similar situation. He was running to his mother to touch her, to drive away his fear. So there's a, a key example of Harlow's study. Now, again, we need to evaluate. Um, so there are some issues and there are some benefits of the research. Uh, so first of all, we have something called a confounding variable. OK, so if we look at the two objects used, uh, they also had different heads. Now, because the heads were different, this might have actually confused the results. Perhaps the monkeys were more interested in the head than they were between the, the cloth and the wire. So we can't really be sure whether it was cloth or wire that actually affected where the monkeys went to. So it can actually reduce the validity of the study. Furthermore, we need to think about the ethics. So there were long lasting emotional harm um, for the monkeys. They later found it quite difficult to form relationships. So some of the monkeys actually went on to neglect and in some cases kill their own offspring. Uh, some say that all right, the, the study was unethical, uh, but it, outweigh, it was outweighed by the benefits. Okay, So because of the study, we now understand the importance of early attachments for later social development, which might lead to better care in both human and primate infants. Uh, so for example, social workers are able to apply this knowledge. Uh, they can understand neglect and child abuse a bit better, and they can possibly um, intervene with earlier intervention than possibly they would have done before. Okay, so they're the key, two key studies for attachment, so both Harlow and Lorenz and some key evaluation points in terms of their strengths and weaknesses.